Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to change or inspect the brake pads on a Jeep TJ or Wrangler. Uh, same thing, different countries. And uh, this one in particular is a 1998 model. Um, all brakes work pretty much the same, just the bolt sizes might be slightly different. Um, you know, disc brake is a disc brake is a disc brake. Same principle. So, we're going to start off uh, some tools that you might want. You need a 19mm socket, take off the lug nuts. You need a 13mm wrench. Um, sometimes you can fit a 13mm socket in there. I like to use a wrench. And pry bar, you can use a large screwdriver. Uh, socket extension, you can use a wrench if you really want to. And sometimes a C clamp is handy. We'll get into that later. So, first thing you're going to do is while the weight of the vehicle is still on the tire, you're going to crack off the lug nuts. Otherwise, when you put the force on, it's just going to spin the tire on you. So, it's going to take that off. And uh, another thing, once you start hoisting this, you want to make sure that your vehicle's in park. If it's an automatic, you brake set. Uh, you can put it in four low if it's uh, standard and leave it in first gear. Uh, just make sure that the park brake's set. Uh, if you want to chalk the wheels, that's fine too. So we'll put our lug nuts here. So we're going to do this. We're going to put our jack underneath the pump in here. And bring it up just high enough that the tire clears the ground, just like that. A lot of people like to jack it right up, but why have the bottom of your tire this high and then have to hold 80 pounds of rubber? When you can just pull it off like that. So at this point, once the tire's off, if you want to jack it up a little bit higher so that it's easier to work on, that's fine. I don't bother. So 13 mil wrench. Let's get a good view. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this nut and this nut. Sorry, bolt the other end. Just gonna slide that out. The next bit is really complicated. All you're gonna do is just pull the caliper off like that. Now, if this line is a rubber line and it's your stock rubber line, you definitely do not want to take this caliper and drop it because you'll stretch or tear or break this line. This one is an extended line and it's uh, made of steel braided, so I'm comfortable just dangling this caliper like that. However, if it's that rubber line, definitely don't want to have the weight of that caliper hanging on it. Sometimes you can get away with it, but for the fact that if you break that line, you won't be able to drive your vehicle until you get a new one, probably don't want to do that. So, the rest of it is fairly simple as well. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to push this pad in towards the caliper, pop it up, same thing on the other side. The rest of you there, the more fun it is to do that, of course. And then just pull it right out. Now, as you can see, there's still lots of meat left on this pad. This is for demonstration purposes only. Just put that down. This one, just pull it straight out. So another thing you can do to ease installation is this piece uh, pushes out when there's fluid uh, applied. So whenever you push the pedal, all it's doing is pushing fluid through here. It's a basic hydraulic system. This is basically a hydraulic ram that will push out and it will clamp onto your rotor here and basically stop your vehicle. So if you want to get a little bit of extra room, if there's a pan in the ass to try and get this off of the rotor, you can just take a C-clamp, push that back in. It should move in freely. If it doesn't, um, you may want to look at getting this caliper serviced. There's probably a little bit of rust on the inside if this rubber boot is worn out or whatever. So, while we're at it, we're going to take our rotor off. It just pulls off. You're going to 
just check the surface to make sure there's not a whole bunch of pitting. It's not grooved way in. Um, usually it's stamped on the outside here what the minimum thickness of this rotor can be. And you can actually measure it and see if it's worn down too far and needs to be replaced. If you're going to replace one, you should replace both sides at the same time. Same thing with brake pads. Um, generally, all four brake pads would need replacing at the same time. Um, sometimes it's just the front. I usually try and do all four at the same time. And another thing we can check is a uh, wheel bearing. You can move this around and get any sort of clunk or movement up and down, then your wheel bearing is probably shot. It's a good time to replace it because you have everything off anyways. And these dust shields, uh, if you 4x4, four four, you always get rocks and stuff jammed up in there and they bend and you're driving down the road and all you can hear is erp, 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 because this is bent in and it's contacting your rotor. Uh, you can just bend it back by hand. I bend mine back usually once every three months or so because I've bounced them off of something. So, I'm just going to throw this back on. That's why I have still rated brake lines. Another thing to consider is whenever you're installing these pads, this piece right here is going to slide on this metal bar. You can add a little tiny bit of grease on this metal bar uh, just to keep it from seizing up. Um, you want to make sure you don't get any grease or oil on the pad itself or on the rotor. So, I'll just give you a different angle here. All we're going to do is that clip just pops in like that. This pad here just slips in. You want to make sure that those little pins are in the little recess here. And make sure you don't have your Hose twisted up and bottom in first. You see that the tabs line up. Okay. Just a little bit of wiggle. And then with these bolts, a uh, little bit of never seize doesn't hurt. That way you can actually get them off. Same thing with your lug nuts. Just going to run that in. Great one easy to get in the way. And we're going to use our 13 mil wrench. I'm just going to snug that up. They don't have to go stupid tight, but you want to make sure that they're snug enough that they're not going to vibrate out. That's probably good. Now I'm going to show you the trick of putting your tire back on. With an off road tire like this, um, they can weigh up to 80 pounds or more with the rim. So, rather than lifting it up all the way, like I mentioned before, I'm going to get it to just the right height. I'm just going to spin the tire in place, just to try and get our lug nuts lined up. It's going to be difficult. So you can see I'm actually just sliding the tire on the ground. I'm not actually picking up the whole weight. just like that. So if you have it at just the right height, you're not actually picking the weight of the tire off. You're just kicking the bottom in and letting it stand up by itself. Because uh, trying to hold 80 pounds like this and then trying to line up those holes is a little bit frustrating. So I do it the easy way. Work harder, or work smarter, not harder, sorry. So I'm just going to throw the lug nuts back on. And again, you're just going to want to uh, get them to snug up a little bit. You won't be able to tighten them all the way until you have 
the weight of the vehicle back on the tire, otherwise it's just going to spin on you. And whenever you're tightening these, if there's a certain sequence that you have to follow, it doesn't matter which one you start with, but you always want to alternate sides. So again, we're going to use our 19 mil socket, flip the ratchet the other way. And all I'm going to do right now, I'm not doing the sequence just yet, I'm just getting them to contact the rim first. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this one. This one right here, I'm going to come across again, I'm going to tighten up this one, I'm going to come across, tighten up this one, and I'm going to come across and tighten up this one. Now that I have them somewhat snug, I'm going to go ahead and drop my jack. So now the weight of the vehicle is on the tire, I'm going to start with this one again, and uh, with a steel rim, you're looking for around 80 foot-pounds of torque. It's an aluminum rim, you're looking at about 110, um, depending on the rim and what vehicle torque tech. Torque spec's gonna change a little bit for you. Um, because of the size of my tire and what I do with it, I generally aim for about 100 foot-pounds, which I have a pretty good feel for. It's about that thing. Again, I'm just going to alternate. Going across, and then I'm just going to recheck the last little bit. That feels good. Feels good. It's very important that you follow that cross pattern, always going across. Otherwise, you can actually warp your tire, or sorry, warp your rim. It's going to feel kind of funky when you're driving down the road. So, there you go. Take it for a little test drive, make sure everything works okay. Um, after a couple hours of driving around, uh, torque it up again. Again, it's going to depend on how you're driving your vehicle. Uh, I put this thing through the ringer, so if I'm going to go beat it around for half an hour, I'll check them in half an hour. If you're going to drive on the highway, you know, check them in three or four hours. If you're going to drive around town, you're good for a day or two, and then torque them back up. So there you go. You know, less than 15 minutes. You've uh, changed or, ins or inspected your brakes. Really simple to do, basic hand tools. Um, you know, if you can manage to do the wash by yourself, you can manage to change your brake pads.